Hi. Can you hear me okay? That's a geo GIF. Um, that's Denmark over there. And uh, then there's uh, Sweden on the right. And uh, labels dancing around, they're actually ships. Uh, the size of the labels are defined uh, in the data. It's based on how big the ships re really are uh, in real life and a combination of speed, so there's like a nice d dynamic look. Uh, the orientation of the label is defined uh, by the real orientation of the ship, where it's actually going. And uh, one might think, uh, why? Why did you do this? <laughs> That's a great question. I, I don't know myself. Does this add any value to anyone? Maybe not. But this is the kind of stuff I do. Uh, I, I, I think it gives a nice overview, and I will be showing a few more of this kind of confusing stuff. But I, I noticed that ships have nice names, like color fantasy, hey. Uh, so I had a nice introduction already, but uh, still I have this boring uh, about me slide, sorry. So by day I have a real work, and then Outside of office hours, I have this fake work, why I'm here now. I'm currently on summer vacation from my real work. Uh, and yesterday, I also gained a new title. I realized, I've, I've been thinking, what's my label? Who am I? I'm a xenocardiographer. Thanks, thanks, Martin. So I uh, do weird maps uh, because I enjoy it. And because my background is in geography, uh, and I work in IT, and all of these things come together into a weird map making, and I have a portfolio too. So this, this fake work that I do, because um, I don't have any real clients, uh, like really occasionally, but I, I do get some requests, but usually I don't want to, because I just do this for fun. Uh, but this fake work can be either data driven, so I see on Twitter, like uh, somebody posted it, hey, Danish, Marine something has this open data for GPS locations, and then I thought, oh, hey, I need to do something with this. That was one. That's one source of how I start doing this. Uh, it can be either tool-driven. Somebody posts on Twitter, hey, I created this uh, nice Python package uh, for geospatial data. You should try it out. And then I go and try it out. Or even sometimes I even get ideas. Like, uh, just a genuine idea, maybe. Hey, is, is there geospatial data available on this topic? And then I do something, or attempt to do something. Um, this comment was, uh, once I posted uh, one of those animations on Twitter, and this comment was very delightful. And I, I think it sums up what I, what I want to do with my visualizations. Make, making data sexy. Yeah, that, that's it. But, I also l like to annoy people, uh, whether it be uh, designers with wrong uh, color choices, or whether it be IT people with stupid workflows or stupid GIFs, or, but I, I, I kind of like it when, when somebody gets annoyed. It's always a good, uh, good sign. It means that I'm doing something correct. Uh, and then, because I, I feel like um, we've had a few talks which touch geospatial stuff and maps, but, but still I feel like when I talk to people that I, I'm coming in from geospatial domain. But uh, for, for people coming, uh, working in the geospatial domain, everyone has to have heard the phrase of one single uh, company in there that 80% of all data is spatial. I think that's BS. Uh, it's nonsense. I think all data is somehow spatial, X and Ys, if you like find your way, you can always show it in a space somehow. And uh, even though it would be 80%, I, I think 80% shouldn't be visualized on, on maps. So if you he hear, ever hear that phrase, don't believe it. Uh, but still, why geospatial stuff and maps is important, or not, <laughs> my opinion. Uh, in general, people can understand maps pretty well. So, uh, and, and if you look at your phones and look at your, the apps you have there, uh, quite a lot of them have map as the basis of the UI. People can interact with maps. So uh, that's why I think this is important that there is also a map talk. 
Uh, and traditionally, the GIS field has been somewhat separate from other data people and designers, and I, I, I think it's, it's pretty stupid, and I have this naive uh, wish that in the future we will all come together, and there will be also other GIS and geo folks here, and, and vice versa, in, in the geo conferences too. And also, mo most importantly, maps are cool, everyone likes maps. Uh, but then, a few words about uh, the tools that I use. Uh, this, is, this highly informative infographic shows uh, how, uh, through, through a tri trial and error, I, I usually work. Uh, the most important tool is QGIS. Uh, and when necessary, I write some Python, and then I have a PostGIS um, database, and uh, I use GIMP. I, Previously, I've used Photoshop, but all of these are open source tools that I use in my work. This fake work, I mean. Uh, QGIS is a desktop software, uh, and to my mind, it's the best desktop software currently out there. Uh, recently, uh, version 3.0 uh, was released from QGIS, and um, when I was uh, in university, uh, I had one course on, on QGIS, and I was thinking, this is absolutely, uh, this is the crappiest software I've ever used, uh, really unstable, uh, I'll never use this. Uh, but then uh, years passed and all of a sudden it's, uh, there's a wide coder base and, and people are developing it really actively and it, I, uh, how fast it progresses, it, it's amazing. But basically my, my advice to anyone who's uh, has data on their laptop with X's and Y's coordinates or something, uh, don't write your own code to uh, uh, change the format. Don't write your own code to uh, change the uh, coordinate system or something. Use, use QGIS. There are a lot of good open geospatial tools out there for you. Uh, even though you would be good in maths, it doesn't make sense to start writing your own coordinate transformation algorithms. You can do it if you wish, of course. All of us have pretty weird um, ambitions. Um, but but in, with QGIS, you can basically do static, uh, but also interactive visualizations. Uh, and I work all, quite a lot with the plugins it offers. Like Time Manager, you will see a lot of that stuff. Uh, yes, there's 3GS. You can export uh, maps to 3GS, uh, to leaflets, to open layers, uh, and we had a talk today about OpenStreetMap, and you can actually uh, download OpenStreetMap data with QGIS. Uh, I've done 3D printing data with, with it, and yeah, I've heard like 90% of the people do D3 stuff. Yeah, you can also export D3. And what I usually do is I uh, use QGIS to do the basic stuff, then I export it, and then I hack around with the end result. So that's what I recommend also you to do. Uh, Python I, I mainly use for uh, scraping data and cleaning data and, and moving it around. Um, I only code when it's necessary because I'm not really a coder. I've thought, taught myself enough Python to get along in, in, in these visualizations. Um, but one thing I feel I'm really interested in is uh, how QGIS is built on Python and you can really easily extend it and maybe build your own plugins. But in general, uh, you want to make pretty maps, uh, you don't need to code. That's one of the things I, I, I want to highlight. The world already has enough bad code, so let's not write anymore. Uh, and, and then PostGIS, so uh, I don't think I don't think I've heard a lot of talks covering anything about databases here, but in, in general, I, I feel like the databases are the unsung heroes of data visualization. So everyone wants to do the front end stuff, but uh, does it, is it really necessary to bring all the 20 million points to the browser? Why not clean the data a bit more and analyze it a bit more in the database? Just an idea. Of course, it doesn't work always, but just an idea. Uh, and and PostGIS is a spatial extension of Postgres, so that means that you can do spatial operations like uh, analyze intersections or do buffers or 
uh, this kind of stuff really fast and easy. And I would even say that knowing SQL is more beneficial uh, in geospatial stuff than knowing uh, basic coding. And sometimes people, like non-techy people ask, so what is the role of a database really? Like why do I need, it? need one? And then I usually say that, have you ever tried opening two million lines of data in Excel? And, and then they, they might understand. But then, on to the main topic. I've been discussing with people quite a lot how to pronounce geogifery. That's how I pronounce it. A Finn would pronounce it geogiferu. Uh, and, and I've also heard a version uh, geogifery, but I'll, I'll go with geogifery. Um, the theory behind animated maps. Uh, by the way, I, I found this really nice font from PowerPoint, so I, 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 I thought that the theory part is really boring, so I wanted to use this to, to, to lighten it up. Uh, so basically, before tech or before the web, uh, you could already show the movement or stuff like that, that uh, on maps, but it was much more difficult. Now that we, uh, we have uh, technology, technology has enabled us to do animation. So, but it's pretty easy, but uh, there are a lot of limitations. I'll show you almost all the examples are mine, but some of them are good and some of them are bad. Uh, we already heard uh, much more professional talk about visual perception, so I'm not gonna go too into that, but I actually made some research. Uh, this is like a real PhD thesis based on uh, anim just on animated maps. Uh, but you can easily block the whole animation with too much information. But I, I think those last three points are the most important ones. So uh, if it's really long, people get lost in it. Uh, if it's really, uh, if the geometries move here and there without any, any logical uh, pattern, it it's becomes unreadable. And um, if the geometries in, in general, if they, uh, well, you'll see soon. <laughs> uh, but one thing to consider is, uh, when, when I talk about maps uh, showing animations on, on different times, is that map always has a temporal extent. So map, a static map is always a snapshot of a certain point in time. Uh, but what are these good for? I have a few categories uh, for the stuff that I've been uh, spamming on Twitter there during the late year or so. So first, and I would say most importantly, is uh, the way to display movement with animated maps. Uh, sorry, that was all the text pretty much. No more comic sense. So more, more pictures. Uh, this is ship traffic, more ships. Uh, this is on the Gulf of Finland between uh, Helsinki and uh, Tallinn and the ships going to the right, they're going to St. Petersburg. Uh, some designers might think, oh no, there's way too much information, I cannot decode the values, the colors are all wrong. But uh, I, I personally think that it gives a, I don't know, it's excellent, but pretty good overview on how much, when I, when I had this data in the database, I was collecting it from the API, I had no clue how much traffic there is. This is 24 hours of traffic on, on the Gulf of Finland, so once I, finished this animation, I was really surprised how, how, how congested it is. Uh, the colors actually show the home country of the ship. So the, no, I'm not gonna go there. Um, then I made a custom one. I wanted to do something for, for the conference. So, <laughs> uh, I, I loaded 30 gigabytes of uh, flight GPS data, and that's actually Paris. And uh, all of those are planes. Uh, this is two hours of uh, plane traffic above Bar Paris. So you see above, uh, and, and the uh, uh, size of the circle is representing how, how high the planes are. Uh, but this is one of those bad examples. I wanted to do something really nice, but I, I think this is way too much. You can see the airport there, how planes are moving really like uh, in an organized matter, and then that's, that's pretty much it. But, uh, I don't know, I'll, I'll give this two stars out of five. 
Um, then, a, a more, I would say, a better way to visualize uh, flight data. So this is uh, a week worth of flights uh, from Brazil. So I have found this data set about uh, like origin and destinations uh, in, in Brazil and, and the start time and the end time. So in PostGIS, I created simple lines between the starting and the end, end points. And then with QGIS Time Manager, I, I created this animation. So also, it's hard to decode single things from there, but you, you get a nice overview. And one single frame, this is uh, roughly 300 frames looping. So one single frame is uh, one hour, if I remember right. But one, thing you, one pattern you can see is uh, when it's night, there's no uh, flights inside Brazil. Then you see the long haul flights flying around. But, and, and also you can see that how unconnected Brazil is with the rest of South America, which was surprising to me. Um, then some heartbeat. This is isochrones. These are different uh, US cities. The top left is Miami, and uh, top, bottom right is Seattle, and then all the Americans can argue which, which is which. Uh, so this is isochrone, so this shows driving time from the center of each, each city and how far you can reach in, in one hour. And why are they beating like that? It's because uh, it shows 24 hours, so the minimum size is the uh, peak traffic hour and then the biggest during the night, of course, you can drive further. Uh, informative? Not really. But I did it anyhow. Uh, accessibility in general, I think it's one, I, I consider it as a sub-genre in, inside movement. So this is one area which I think anim animations work pretty well. And this is uh, one example of that. So uh, this starts from my house and it shows, uh, it compares uh, bicycle travel, public transportation and, and car to everywhere in, in Helsinki. Uh, and it, on the top left, you can see how, how, how it starts at four o'clock and, and, and then uh, on shorter distance, bike is best, but then uh, cars quickly surpasses it and, and public transport is pe pretty weak to the uh, furthest points. But uh, this is the kind of thing, I, I had seen this data set before, this is made by, by the University of Helsinki, the, geography de department. They have pre-calculated the data set, so I had uh, a lot of CSVs, which I then uh, fiddled around in, in PostGIS and QGIS and, and, and made this. I had seen uh, heat maps before made with the same data, but I think this just, this is one of those uh, better experiments, I would say. Uh, then simply showing things in sequence is another uh, category where animations work pretty well. Uh, this was uh, uh, in a news piece by the Finnish public broadcasting company. Uh, it shows uh, the, how the ice sheet or the sea ice is melting uh, around, around the North Pole. Uh, so uh, it's not the best, I'd say, because uh, like, like we've already heard about uh, visual perception, it's, and, and I showed in the theory part, which you probably lost because of the Comic Sans. Uh, it's really hard to remember the previous frame, uh, especially as, as it's not shown there. But because um, it starts all over again, the most surprising part in this uh, is my mind, when it starts all over again, then you realize, oh, it was so far, far south, uh, south considering Helsinki, Finland. But um, yeah, this, I'll, I'll give it three stars. And fight for this. Um, then, yeah, it, it is working, although it's pretty slow. This is buildings from Madrid. Uh, there's a uh, year running on, on top left. Uh, I've done a similar thing for uh, quite many cities where I've found, found suitable data. And um, here you can see how the city grows slowly. So they appear on the map simply on, on the year when they were built. Uh, then this is, uh, I think, the only one which hasn't been made by me. It's made by Alice de Rey. You can find him on Twitter. He does uh, similar kind of stuff. Uh, and this is um, 
also a GIF, uh, but it's, let's say, more informative and, and slightly with a different aspect than, than the ones that I was showing. And then a uh, few weirder stuff. Uh, in general, uh, cartographers hate cartograms. Uh, this is showing um, UK and, and how, how the population is uh, po population in, in relation to the area. So uh, if it's just a cartogram with, with really distorted geometries, it, it, it fails usually to deliver the whole message. But I think in, a, in an animation way, this works really well. You can see the real geometries and then how they compare in a, in a really fast manner. Uh, then this is just, this is uh, countries of the world rotating. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I just wanted to train like, like how to uh, get data to post CS with Python and then I tried it rotating, sorry. Uh, then uh, how to, like oh, I already presented the tools, but like, as you've seen, uh, the data is the key in these. So if the data is bad, uh, the animations don't work. Like uh, I partly blame in, in the poor uh, flight uh, GIF the data because it it's, isn't really good. Um, but all of these are made with QGIS Time Manager I, or QGIS Atlas. So basically the process is I have data with uh, locations and timestamps, then I export PNGs uh, and then I stitch them into a GIF. And if your data is poor, you will spend most of the time in the non-interesting stuff. Um, but there are a few uh, tutorials. You, you can find, find this from my website, for example. But now probably most of you are thinking that the big elephant in the room is that uh, you want interactivity and uh, I'm making GIFs. So uh, there's like a, I don't, I don't know, like I've considered them as a, as a lower value thing. And, and, and when, I, when I was working in IT, people were saying, oh, you're making GIFs? It's why not make a proper application or, or a JavaScript thing that you can boot on the browser and everybody can click around. Mm, yeah, I, I, I understand the point, but uh, I'm now trying to be for GIFs, the sport GIFs. If you think how, uh, how nice idea is, it is that I have like gigabytes of data and all of a sudden it's uh, in a five kilobyte uh, GIF and it still gives you a good overview of the data. It's pretty nice. They work on websites. They work on all browsers, including IE. They work on mobile. Uh, and it's been this pretty much similar for the last 30 years. So I think that's worth something. And if you think how, how they're used nowadays in the social media, it's, we can really see the value there. I don't know, that value? I don't know. We can see how popular they are. <laughs> Uh, and this was also in my title, I just realized it later, that I also promised to show other experimental ways to visualize geospatial data, besides GIFs. Well, I, I've done something. Uh, so this is actually made by, uh, with, with OpenStreetMap data. So a few years ago, some of you might have seen the Roads to Rome project by Movil Lab. So I got the idea from there, but uh, I wanted to do the process myself. So this is one starting point, the center of the contiguous US, and then it, the routes go to all, all counties. Uh, of course, I've done also an animated version of this, but I wanted to show something else for a change. Uh, and uh, I really like, in general, uh, in, in the stuff I do, uh, how, how stuff look organic all of a sudden. I, I find that really fascinating, like people moving, or this looks like, a, electricity or veins or something. Uh, I've been experimenting with topography, so text, uh, visualizing text on maps. So that's hurricanes, and they might look like lines, but actually it's only text. And, and the size of the text is relative to uh, the, the wind speed of the hurricane. Uh, this is similar to the, the isochrone I, I showed from the US, but a static version. So it's uh, European cities compared. Oh, one of those things, not sure if it's like, it looks nice. Uh, it's on the border of being uh, an infographic and a, and a map. I don't know. 
you tell me, you're, you're the designers. Is, is this, would somebody do something with it? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I've, I've also done interactive stuff. Uh, this is population of Europe in, uh, in 3D. Uh, so I'm, I'm really interested in misusing tools in general. So uh, this is done with a QGIS plugin that's used to, for terrain mapping. So if you have a raster with uh, height data, uh, you, you can do uh, uh, like nice 3GS uh, thingy. But I, I had population data in raster, so I, I thought, that, well, that, that might look nice. And, and it did. Uh, this is also, you can find also a link to this on, on my website. Uh, Paris looks like Sauron's Tower or something. <laughs> uh, then, conclusions. People want conclusions, always. Uh, first set of conclusions. I'm not sure how I feel about GIFs. <laughs> uh, I, I really, yeah, uh, it's a love hate thing. Uh, but maybe it's more on the love side, I guess. Uh, like I said, they work really well on social media. Even though the, the uglier ones I post, people tend to be pretty excited about them. Uh, and I, I think in general, people are pretty lazy. Uh, like, many people might like it that they just browse and it's automatically, it's already uh, processed for you, all, all the data in there. You just have to sit back and enjoy. You don't have to do the interactivity. I don't know. Just a thought. But, in general, I, yeah, more conclusions. Uh, if you want to go into geospatial stuff, uh, just download QGIS and, and play around with it. You have CS with, with X's and Y's. You can figure it out, definitely. And dare to right click. Uh, you don't always need to code. Uh, use the tools somebody else has made for you. Like, I, I consider somebody wiser than me has, has made for you. Just use them. Uh, and there's a secret that uh, the geospatial people don't really like to tell to others, but seriously, the spatial stuff, it isn't really special. Anyone can sort it out. Thanks a lot.